The Blind Side is a, a fascinating true story that uh, it's an unlikely relationship between uh, Michael Orr and a family, the Tuies, that took him in. Do you have any place to stay tonight? Come on. It's almost like the universe created this family, got it going. They were doing great, and they were having all the success and the joy in the world, but something was missing. You know, the first time I spent the night at the house, um, you know, I felt like that's where I was supposed to be in. And, you know, they made me feel at home. You know, Michael moved in to live with us full time, and uh, it had a, probably a much greater impact on our lives than we, you know, did on, on his life. Sandra has channeled Leanne Tui. It really is important to see Leanne and Sandra Bullock in the same place and have them talk. <laughs> the Blind Side a 2009 American biographical sports drama written and directed by John Lee Hancock based on the 2006 book The Blind Side, Evolution of a Game by Michael Lewis. The storyline features Michael Orr, an offensive lineman who is drafted by the Baltimore Ravens of the National Football League. The film follows Orr from his impoverished upbringing, his adoption by Sean and Leanne Tui, to his position as one of the most highly coveted prospects in college football, then finally becoming a first round pick of the Ravens. This movie was nominated for awards and Sandra Bullock had a career solidifying acting performance as well. It's equally heart wrenching as it is heartwarming. But how accurate was this movie in the portrayal of Michael Orr's real life? We break that down today. Hello. And welcome to Sports Vaults, presented by Data Productions, uncovering the untold, lost, and forgotten files of the sports world. Today, we will be separating the fact from fiction in this critically acclaimed football movie, The Blind Side. Let's answer the questions we have all been asking. Did the father, Sean Tui, first spot Michael in the stands at his daughter's volleyball game? No. The real Sean Tui did first spot Michael Orr when he was sitting in the stands of the Briarcrest gym, but it was during a basketball practice, not Sean's daughter volleyball game. At that point, Michael was still academically ineligible to play on the Briarcrest boys basketball team. Was Leanne the first one in the Tui family to help Michael? No. Unlike what we see in the movie, in real life, Leanne's husband, Sean, started paying for Michael's lunch at school before his wife encountered Michael on the side of the road. A fictional account of this can be seen in the DVD's deleted scenes. Was the Tui family the only family that Michael Orr stayed with while attending Briarcrest? No. In reality, it took months after the roadside encounter before the Tui family welcomed Michael into their home. For months, Michael actually continued staying with Tony Henderson, a.k.a. Big Tony, the mechanic whose son also attended Briarcrest Christian School. And for months after that, at least five different families, both white and black, provided Michael with a place to stay after his coaches realized that he didn't have a home. This eventually included the Tui family. He'd stay here once in a while, and then he'd leave, says Sean Tui, and then he seemed more comfortable to stay. With regard to the Tui family, the real Michael Orr said, When I moved in with Leanne and Sean, I felt loved, part of a family. In the other houses, I didn't feel like I was a part of the family. I didn't feel like they wanted me there. Was the Tui's daughter, Collins, really a high school volleyball player? No. In real life, the Tui's daughter, Collins, was a state champion pole vaulter. She was also a high school cheerleader, as seen in the movie. Did Michael Orr really have to learn to play football when he first joined the high school team? No, this was grossly exaggerated in the movie. Michael did not have to learn how to play football, and Leanne never walked onto the practice field to inspire Michael by telling him to protect his team as if he was protecting their family. The film's suggestion that he needed to be taught how to play football really upset the real Michael Orr. That part right there, it really got me because it was never like that. I've always known how to play the game of football. I've always had a passion for the game. You know, it's Hollywood, so I mean, that's what they do. 
but at the end of the day, it's still a good story. Michael was not a timid player and did not have to be toughened up. In the movie, they depict him as being a big cream puff and being a former football player myself, if I was in his shoes and they went the route of me never knowing how to play the game before high school, I would definitely feel a little bit disrespected because you don't get to the level where you're at without having you know, some innate abilities of playing the game. Not many people who pick up the game of football in high school turn out to be top level elite NFL players like Michael Orr was during his time of playing days. So I understand where he's coming from. Did Michael really remain silent when taunted by racist fans at a game? No. As Michael Lewis states in his book, when racist fans were taunting him, the real Michael Orr gave them the middle finger. Did the library scene really happen with Leanne's daughter Collins? No. The real Collins Tui never had to overcome taunting at school because of Michael staying with her family. My friends were very open to Michael, Collins said. They were very sweet to him and we all got along really well. Collins Tui was an honor student and she rearranged her entire class schedule in order to help Michael. She dropped all her AP classes to be in Michael's English and math classes so that she could understand what his assignments were. She spent several hours at night helping him with his homework. That was the most studying I've ever done in my life, Collins recalled. Quit looking at me like that. I mean, we studied together at home. Collins isn't quite as timid as her on-screen counterpart, and being seen with Michael at school was never an issue. Did Michael really get in a fight when he was wanting to see his mom? Oh yeah, she's fine. No, Michael did not get into a fight with gang members in his old neighborhood. However, while he was in college at Old Miss, Michael got into a fight with teammate Antonio Turner, who had visited the Tui's home. At some point after his visit, Turner called Michael a cracker for living with a white family. Antonio also made comments to Michael suggesting that he was going to have sex with Michael's white sister and white mother, similar to the comments made by the gang member in the movie. This infuriated Michael, who chased after Antonio and eventually tracked him down hiding in the study hall where the football players studied with their tutors. Michael threw the 230-pound Antonio onto the ground, picked him up by the throat, beat him in the face, and threw him across the room. In the process, a three-year-old son of one of the tutors was knocked to the floor and suffered a bad head wound. The small white boy laid on the floor in a pool of his own blood. When Michael saw what happened to the boy, he ran off. At Sean Tui's urging, Michael eventually turned himself in to the campus police. And Sean called his friend, a well-known attorney, Steve Faris. Michael ended up making apologies and was given 10 hours of community service. Regarding Michael going back to his old neighborhood to see his mom, it is stated in author Michael Lewis's book that whenever Michael Orr went back to his old neighborhood, bad things often happened. For instance, on one occasion, Michael arrived at his birth mother's apartment to find her being arrested. She had been driving around in a truck that had belonged to a man who turned up murdered. The police asked Michael what he was doing there and then took him into custody to Central Lockup. Sean had to get him out. While this movie has a lot of accurate portrayals, the creators of the film took large liberties when it came to the fictionalized parts of the story, to the point where Michael Orr had to write a book counteracting some of the misrepresentations in the motion picture. What is your take on this topic? Did you like this movie? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments and like and subscribe for more investigation content like this. This was Sports Vaults, presented by Data Productions. See you next time.